Hey everybody, wanted to take a little bit of time here and um, welcome a new uh, subscriber to my channel who has just purchased a dulcimer. Awesome, congratulations. And if you've just purchased a dulcimer, congratulations. You're going to have a lot of fun learning it, alright? So I want to take a few minutes and show you what to do. If you, if you, uh, you know, this might help you out. If, if you don't already know this, you might know it. If not, uh, I'm trying to help those people who uh, may or may not have gotten any kind of help when they bought their dulcimer, you know, about what to do, how to tune it, what things to do. First of all, on your dulcimer, it may be, I'm kind of talking loud because of this rain. I'm worried about y'all not being able to hear, but your dulcimer is probably either one of two things. It's probably got one, two, three, four strings, or one of these strings is gone and it's got three strings. You're not going to play it any differently either way, so don't worry about that. They both sound really great. That four string just gives it a little more, a little more zing when you play it, uh, but don't worry about that. Uh, several things that I would recommend you to purchase along with your dulcimer. Obviously strings, an extra set of strings, because the strings that are on it may be old or whatever. If they are new, that's fine. But uh, get yourself a pick of some sort. Um, you know, they're, they're relatively cheap, so get a couple different ones to try some different things. They come in different thicknesses. Um, this one I have is sort of a fancy one. It's got three different thicknesses on the same pick. Uh, but you don't have to be that fancy. I've used a credit card cut up before in a pinch when I didn't have a pick. But pick yourself up. Pick yourself up a couple of picks. Plectrums. So that you can strum it. Okay. Another thing I want you to get. It's an electronic tuner. Um, they come in all different sort of models and stuff like that. But uh, wherever you get it from, you can just get an all instrument tuner. Um, I like these snark ones. Um, but all of them, you can change out the battery pretty easily. They're under $20. Do yourself a favor and pick yourself up one. Now, if you have a flat head, this is what's called a scroll head. If you have a flat head, it's really easy to clip this onto. But it's really not that hard on a scroll head either. Because this is, the way this works is I can just clip it right here. And it works just fine and picks up my strings. This will help you, okay? Get that, get a pick, and then get your dulcimer tuned up. Alright? Okay, so I have my tuner attached you can see it kind of going all over the place and that's because I'm talking and it's picking it up um, so let's go down and let's hit our large string okay that's this bass string okay let's hit that large string and we'll see where we're at <laughs> Okay, now we want that to be tuned to a D. And as I strike it, you can see that green, it looks like a little man. <laughs> There's red to the left of it. And above it, it goes, it goes yellow, as you can see it jumping up. But there's a green little man, and we want that green little man. That's showing that we are right on with our tuning. Now, Keep in mind, I'm out here in the rain. It's humid. Uh, we are using wood and strings, and these instruments will get out of tune in the rain and different weather conditions. So we want to check our tuning. But anyway, there we go. There's my D. Now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna strike the middle string. This one right here. I'm gonna strike that one, and that should be an A. Let's see where we are. Okay, now when they call something, see how there's one, 
one little yellow bar. That means that note is a little sharp. It's a little touch high, but that's okay. I'm going to leave it there right, for right now. Um, let's see where we're at with our... We've got these two melody strings down here that will be D. So let's try the first one. Right on. Second one. A little sharp. Okay. So if we're off on any of our strings, we're going to turn our pegs. Now, based on how your tuners are laid out, it can be to where you turn it um, away from you and it go higher. Or it could be the opposite where you turn it towards you and it go higher. Now, generally, it's going to be away from you is higher uh, on on these on the um, left side of your instrument if you're playing right-handed okay so I'm in the middle string and I'm plucking it it should be an A ooh now see how that shows A sharp that little number sign is a sharp shows A sharp and it's over there in the red so if I want to go down to an A because sharp means above that note I'm gonna turn this away from me. Now it's an A, not an A sharp, and it's too low, so I need to turn it towards me a little bit. Okay, that was a little too far. So we just need to adjust that until we get our little man. Okay? Um, and all instruments are going to be different here as far as how you adjust it, uh, how you adjust your tuners. So just look at it while you're doing it. And if it's going up, then obviously you need to bring it down. Okay, I'm going to switch the camera back around. Um, if you want to follow the way I play, you're going to tune in what's called DAD tuning, which means this string, it could be one or two, your melody strings, you're going to tune them to a D. You're going to tune this middle string to an A and this bass string to a D. Okay? That's mixolydian tuning. And uh, that's what I like to play in. Now, uh, the more traditional tuning is called DAA, D A A. And that is more of your noter drone style where you're going to just play on this uh, on your melody line here with either your finger or a noter, which is a little piece of wood generally. Uh, and the other two strings are strummed in their drones. They just ring out open. Uh, I like to play, if you've seen any of my other videos, I like to play more of a chording style where I'm using my fingers, I'm fretting down the notes um, on all different strings. So there you go. Get yourself those. Now, third thing that you need to, I say purchase, you don't need to purchase this one. You can make this one simple. If you got some old t-shirts laying around, all you do is you just braid them up cut them up into strips and braid them up it takes you five minutes okay I made this thing like six or eight years ago um, and then you tie you tie your braided piece onto I mean you can it's easy okay you can you can tie your braided piece with another piece of uh, t-shirt material and that's if you don't have a button right here if you have a button right here that is called a strap button then you can just attach it there but if you don't it's simple so you can just um, attach a longer piece and tie that on with a little little tie in what is called your strum hollow area and it just stays right there on your lap and it sits in the middle and yeah so the other side goes around your body 
And then on the other side, I just have the same thing. I have my three different colors there, knotted up. And then I have a longer piece with a loop on it that I loop around the head. And you can have that on your flat head style also. Now this little strap is a good thing to have. It, it helps you if you are at all aggressive. Um, you know, if you're sitting here in shorts, like I like to do a lot, don't have pants on, your dulcimer sort of slides around on your lap. And you don't want that while you're playing, okay? Um, so put a little strap on there. And it doesn't have to be tight, but when you have your dulcimer in your lap, it makes it really good, okay? It keeps it from flying off. Um, I tend to sort of get a little aggressive when I strum and such. So uh, it wants to fly off my lap. So this stops that. And while I'm playing, if I need to adjust the position <coughs> of my dulcimer, I can do so easily without fear of it falling off in, into the floor or anything like that. So that's good. Okay. Um, uh, where you strum at. Um, when you're playing this, you're going to strum in an outward outward um uh, outward and inward motion now it's perfectly fine to start off strumming like just outward until you get used to it that's perfectly you know that's fine or inward whatever is more comfortable for you over time you'll realize what's more comfortable okay now I mentioned this down here being called a strum hollow. If you strum down here, it's perfectly fine. If you strum down here, your pick will not hit your fretboard. Okay? Your pick hitting your fretboard over time can cause little, you can't see them, can cause little scratches and wear on your uh, fretboard. but. We'll talk about that in a second. So this is the strum hollow. I want you to go ahead and strum here for a little bit and just hear what that sounds like. Okay, now move on up to around this area. You know, uh, this is 10 to 12 to 13 fret. Okay, around this area and strum. You'll notice this is a, a brighter sound and this is a warmer sound. And as you play and as you learn and get better, you can change how you play and what it sounds like based on where you want to strum. Okay? So get this bad boy tuned up to DAD and let's learn a song. Okay. As you can see, I've got my dulcimer to where you can see it now. Uh, okay, so I've got my dulcimer on my lap, and I have my strap attached. And you see how it just comes right here. It's in this strum hollow, and it's not it's not dulling the strings. It's not hitting the strings at all. Uh, so. What we're going to do is strum, outward, and with your pick, you're going to sort of face it away from your body as you pick. So the, the top of it is away from your body the bottom of it is more towards your body. Now, if you want to come the opposite direction, you'll see that I just do a slight little turn. Slight little turn like this with my pick. Work on that and practice that a little bit. Okay, so let's do an easy one that uses one finger and the highest we go these are your frets right here these wires so 
this one right here doesn't count. This is called your nut. That's where your string touches that metal wire. Okay, that's your nut. And it's not touching any of these other frets. Your strings aren't. But what we're going to do is when we push down, we're creating a false nut. So we're pushing down, and what that does is that that makes the strings touch the fret right here if I push here. And this is called the first fret. So if I push here, it sounds like this to start. If I push here, then I go on. Okay, so you're creating a false nut when you press down with your fingers. Okay. Uh, let's do boil them cabbage down. All right, you're gonna do. Uh, you're gonna do a pattern like that. Now you can do this all in out strokes, all in in strokes, or you can try out a pattern that's like. Uh, let's just call it down. So let's go. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Okay. And then with this left hand, we're going to go. Now that's boil them cabbage down. Now, some an, an interesting thing I want to note here is that if you'll remember these, this this is tuned to D, and so is this string. So anything you play down here, you can mirror up here. So let's hear what that sounds like up there on the bass string. you to early on learn that you can mirror things down here on these melody strings you can mirror them up here on this bass string and it gives a deeper sound and it's very nice and a lot of good players use that bass string a lot so there's your first song a couple of tips about it um, yeah I'm gonna change the camera view now so okay I uh, hope that was a good little introduction uh, for you for the dulcimer. Obviously, there's a lot more to go, but this this will get you started. Um, other things to note: uh, if you if you don't if you don't do the strap right away, um, there's other things you can do. Um, you can just put a towel onto your lap. And oftentimes, you know, the, the roughness of the towel will stop that dulcimer from sliding around. Um, as far as the position of the dulcimer on your lap, I always have, you kind of have your legs, it's unladylike, I know, but you have your legs out, you don't have your legs together, but um, you have the, um, the head of the dulcimer, and that's what this is called, scroll head or flat head. And the head of the dulcimer on your knee, on your left knee, away from you. And the back side of the dulcimer, you have more towards you. So it's, it's facing away from you. And that is good because your picking hand, your strumming hand, is real close to you. And you can get all these, as you move on, you can get 
all these finger stretches and things you need to do to cord and things like that, that's easy to do. So if you start out playing with it real close to you and flat up against you, that might not be a great idea. Let's let's move that um, the head more towards your knee. Have it more out towards your knee and have the butt end of it closer to you. And obviously if you have a teardrop dulcimer, it's shaped, this is called an hourglass dulcimer, but if you have a teardrop dulcimer, the shape of it is a little different. And where you'll place it will be just a touch different. Um, another little tip is I don't put mine in a case. I like to leave it hanging up so that I'm looking at it and uh, it makes me want to play it. Also, it's a beautiful uh, mountain instrument and I just want to display it. Uh, so I like to hang mine. I have a little strap of leather that I have just knotted up and then I have a loop and I have a little picture hanger sticking out of the wall that I hang it on. And then I have a little, one of those little pieces of felt on my um, wall there to where this beautiful finish on the back of my walnut doesn't touch the wall or scrape up against it or anything like that. So um, congratulations on getting your dulcimer. Um, you're going to have a lot of fun with it, I know, because I do. I hope this has helped you. Um, feel free, uh, everybody, feel free to give advice to new folks. Tell them where to go uh, in these comments. Give them some links if you want to materials and channels, whatever, um, that might help them out. Because it's all, you know, we're all one big family here, and I want to support everybody who's out there teaching people how to play a dulcima and a banjo. So, you know, I'm not in competition with any of these people. So, if you know of any, or want to, if it's you and you want to tell people that, hey, you can help them out, whatever, um, point them to your channel, point them to your materials. Um, if you put a link on there, it, it holds it for review for me, but I'll approve it. So if you don't, if you put a link in there and you don't see it come up in the comments, I'll come and review and uh, approve it up there for you. Uh, unless it's spam, and then no, obviously I wouldn't. But uh, anyway, I'm so happy you got a dulcimer, and I'm glad you're in the community. And uh, yeah, I'm just totally excited for you. It's gonna be a great fun adventure. Um, if you didn't get a case, you may want to get a case because you want to take this thing with you. You want to go out with it and play it in the park and on a hike or whatever. So um, there's some backpack style cases out there. I don't have one yet. I want one. Um, I have the little chipboard kind of case, but I can carry it anywhere. So um, yeah, get you a case. And awesome I'm just excited for you and you're gonna have so much fun so with that being said I know this is a long video <laughs> if you if you stayed with me the whole time congratulations <laughs> uh, I don't have a prize for you though sorry but um I'll just leave you with this I always want to remind everybody at the end of my videos Jesus loves you bye bye